before I'm going to call the meeting, call the meeting to order. Uh, uh, start off with a traditional land acknowledgement statement, which reads Leeds, Grenville, and Lanark are located on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabek, Huron, Wendat, um, Haudenosaunee, and Oneida, dating back countless generations. We would like to show our respect to Indigenous peoples for their contributions and recognize the role of treaty making in what is now Ontario. Hundreds of years after the first treaties were signed, they're still relevant today. So with that, I'm gonna to move to the agenda. And for that, I have a motion. I have um, indicated on the sheet and please let me know if you wish it to change. Moved by Ann Warren, seconded by Peter McKenna, that the agenda of the September 23rd, 2021 regular meeting be approved as circulated. Does anybody have any additions or comments at all with regard to the agenda? A move be accepted as presented, Mr. Chair. All right, um, well, we have it moved, so oh. I'll just do what I've been doing, and that is, does anybody object to my declaring this motion uh, carried? It is so carried. That then goes to the conflict of interest, having approved the agenda, does anybody have a uh, conflict of interest to declare, and could you provide the nature thereof? No. Nope. Seeing none. I have uh, next topic is the consent agenda. I have the motion and I have inserted the names moved by Doug Struthers, seconded by Bill Dobson. And it reads that the following items on the consent agenda be approved as circulated. They include 5.1 minutes of minutes from the Board of Health regular meeting held on July 22nd, 2021, 5.2 general correspondence, 5.3 MOH CEO duty of care report, 5.4 governance and quality assurance committee duty of care report and 5.5 report uh, from the Finance, Audit, Property and Risk Management Committee. Before I open discussion, I'll ask, does anybody want any one item removed and dealt with separately? And I'll go to the next question, which is anybody have any questions or comments with regard to any of these uh, items? That being the case, I'll ask if anybody objects to my declaring this motion carried. Not hearing any, the motion is carried. That takes us to new business and we have 6.1 governance and quality assurance committee report. Um, and uh, for that, I'm going to turn over the meeting to Ann Warren. Ann, I hope you were expecting that, but I, your name is, That's okay. the initials are there. Uh, thank okay. you. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair. As you know, we are required to conduct a board self-evaluation survey at least once every two years. And um, as you can see uh, before you, you have this uh, self-evaluation survey, a survey uh, in PDF format. However, Heather will be sending it to you in Word format, and it is to be returned by October the 4th. So would you please just mark that down on your calendars that you're to have the survey back to uh, Heather by October the 4th. Then the governance committee will review and tally the results and we're meeting early in, uh, in October to do that and many other things in the governance committee. And I would ask that everyone uh, please complete and return the survey. It does help us to uh, look at what we are doing well and where we need to do a better job as a board. Uh, and it's important to note that the survey is set up to be confidential in nature. So if you will uh, kindly uh, oblige us and send that back in by October the 4th. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions uh, with regard to the item? Pretty straightforward. So uh, with that, uh, causes me to move to the next item, which is 6.2, uh, the MOH update. So Paul, I'll turn over the meeting to you. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Um, so really pleased to say that um, our, we had a little spurt in our uh, COVID cases and LGL, um, um, and now it's settling down. So we have 16 active cases. Now we were up into the 30s, and, and those came about from really significant social gatherings where the virus had spread um, and then spread into households and then spread into a few workplaces. But that seems to have really settled down nicely now. So we have 16 active cases. And remember, the active cases are the ones that are in their 10-day infectious period. We're getting about one or two or sometimes none a day, which is more like uh, we were sort of doing in, in June. 
Um, so pleased with that. I think people are following the precautions and, and the vaccine's making a difference. Um, the majority of the new cases are in people who aren't, uh, who haven't been fully vaccinated. We do have two hospitalizations and one person on a ventilator. And it just reminds us that while COVID can be, um, can be a headache and not feeling well and then recover in five or six days, for some people it really knocks them um, and it really affects the, the breathing because the, the virus starts to really actually affect the alveolar cells. So it's just, every time I look at those numbers and I think of those people, I say, you know, COVID can be really serious. So we have to take it seriously. Um, the, um, what I'm reminding people in my media this week um, is that a critical part of uh, COVID transmission is that when people have symptoms, that they actually isolate and go for testing. And we just have to, we have to keep remembering that. That's a critical part of preventing transmission um, in the community and workplaces and schools and so on. And the province has modified the, the symptoms that specifically are tied to COVID. And that if you have any of these symptoms, then you must isolate, must book an appointment at the assessment center and go for testing. And those symptoms are fever or chills, cough, shortness of breath, loss of taste and smell, and that's really um, quite significant for, for COVID. And then fatigue, muscle pains, joint ache, like really not feeling well. And for children, it's also vomiting or diarrhea. So really keep on remembering that um, when, when people have symptoms, they need to isolate, be tested, and then we will follow up with them if they do have COVID in terms of looking at high-risk contacts. That's a critical part of reducing transmission. Um, so school started, lots and lots of kids went back to school. And in general, I'd say um, it's been pretty smooth from a COVID perspective. We ha we've had a few cases where there was one individual, either an adult or, or a child who went into the, who was in the classroom when they were infected. And all of those individuals are then sent home for a 10 day period from the last exposure and they go for testing. If between the staff and the students, they are fully immunized 14 days after being fully immunized, then they don't have to isolate, which is a huge advantage. We still recommend they go for testing uh, to be on the safe side. Um, and then our job is, is uh, we send the letter home and say, if you're fully vaccinated, you can go to school. And then we check the COVAX database um, for the class people and identify the ones that truly are immunized and not so. Um, so far that's working um, very well. It's only in two schools and you've saw that on the outbreak where we had a, just a tiny bit of transmission um, so that I think things, things have, have been going really, really well. Um, our vaccine rates continue to grow. Um, we had 1,400 first doses last week. So we still are getting a lot of new people coming um, to get their first dose as well as their second doses. So we're now um, as of Monday, 94.1% have their first dose of the 12 plus and 87.7% have the second dose. We're just, we're inching steadily up to that 90%. That's, that's sort of my, that, that I'll be happy when we get there and then I'll be happy when we get beyond it. So it's sort of, it's a goal that we sort of set collectively for, um, for the community. Um, we actually passed 90, 90.1% of the 18 plus population have two doses. So, and once again, we continue to be uh, ahead of other health units because of the whole community response we've had around the vaccine. Um, the 12 to 17 year olds, um, right now we have 85.2% have the first dose and 75.3% the second dose. The consents have gone home and they're starting to come back in again for parents who are willing to have the 12 to 17 year olds have the vaccine in school. So we're expecting those numbers to, to climb quite a bit over the next couple of weeks. Um, and just a reminder to everyone that we really need those two doses. Um, the, for one dose, you have about 33% infection in, uh, prevention against infection. Um, and then it climbs all the way up to 88% uh, with two doses. And Ontario has been doing some studies on our people and those numbers are holding up. And what's really important is that the people who had AstraZeneca when we said the, the one you can get is the best dose, AstraZeneca plus one dose of messenger RNA, either Pfizer or Moderna, they're getting the same really good responses, two doses of uh, messenger RNA. So really pleased about that. Um, we're planning for when the five to 11 year olds will have the vaccine approved by Health Canada. If you've been listening to the news, if Pfizer is getting close to having completed their studies. Um, and we're sort of thinking we've been told early winter 
which could be December or early January. So we're, we're doing the planning right now so that we can move quickly with that group um, just, just as soon as they're immunized. Um, we're still doing community clinics, um, uh, both uh, walk-ins and appointments. Um, and uh, so really we're encouraging people to go to our website because that's where you'll find out what is happening when, where, um, and so on. And really pleased that pharmacies are continuing to give the vaccine. About 60% of our doses now in a week are being given at a pharmacy. And we have so many pharmacies spread across the region that they're a really, really important vehicle. So yesterday was the date of the vaccine certificate being needed in specific places, the indoor restaurants and bars, indoor areas for sports and recreational fitness activities and indoor meeting and event spaces. Um, and I think some of it's gone smoothly and there've been um, some, some little hiccups. Um, so we are responding to, to questions as, as we get them. Um, one thing that um, I think is gonna help is that um, the facility is responsible for um, implementing the regulation. They can um, assign that to the group that is actually renting the space. Um, and sort of um, delegate that responsibility to them as long as they accept it. And that would probably have to be in writing. So I think that's going to help um, places that um, rent spaces but don't necessarily have, have staff there. Um, it's really easy to download the receipt. Uh, people have been telling me all the creative things they do. The information is up on our website. Um, the, um, it, the, when I was on one of the calls, um, one of the, some of the librarians the libraries across the region are actually offering to do it for people. So there are creative ways um, so that people can um, can get the um, the vaccine receipt, and they can always call the health unit. And I hear I hear the admin staff on the call with them, um, and then we mail it out to them. So um, that shouldn't be um, a problem. For a medical exemption for the passport, you do need to have a very specific um, letter from the healthcare provider on their letterhead. Um, specifically saying that not the reason why it, but specifically saying they have a, an exemption and for the time period. Um, so we are, we are sending information out to the businesses and organization. Uh, we developed a sign for them that they can use if they don't have their own. Um, and uh, so we're, we're, our, job, our job in this is to make sure that everyone knows what the, the requirement is. And the regulation is now upon the e-laws and is very specific. Um, um, and the step three regulation as to as to what's needed. Um, and then just a little bit of information, our communications program, that has been um, something that we have invested heavily in because public health key job is to make sure that people have the information they need to make good decisions. Um, so we've had over 3.5 million unique visitors to our website in 2021. 3.5 million unique visitors. I'm already up from the 1.4 million, um, 1.4 million more than 2020 so far. And we're constantly updating our website. People will send us information to have queries. And if it's something that we're thinking, oh, that's something that other people might have as well, then we change it. We've had four, oh, more than 4,400 web mail submissions um, doubling our total in 2020. And our staff respond whenever there's a question. Sometimes they just comment, thank you for this, or I wondered about this. But if there's a question, we respond. And sometimes they, if it's very medical, then they come on to me. We have over 12,000 followers on Facebook, 3,000 followers on Twitter, and over 500 followers on Instagram. We started Instagram for the younger people. And then our staff will respond to comments and questions on social media. Um, so it's um, I'm I am so pleased with with our team. We've we've supplemented it with um, some of the health promotion and the nurses um, who can add to the team we've already had. Um, we've had 90 media requests so far. I know about every single one. I think um, with both regular media interviews and also for specific requests. So um, I wanted to share that with you because that's a key public health function, and I think um, we're responding. Well well to the community. Um, so a new innovative thing that we've just started is wastewater COVID-19 surveillance. So in both Brockville and Kempville, um, the, the municipal staff are, are actually sampling the wastewater. And then those samples go off to, I, I, I won't say which, to a university and they're analyzed. And we get regular reports, daily reports on the level of COVID-19 in the wastewater because it's excreted through the stools. 
And um, this past week, we had alerts. For, we had an alert from uh, Brockville. And with a, is they, they tell you a little tiny blip, it's called a signal. Little tiny blip came up and then it settled down again. But Ottawa has been doing this for quite a while and um, I've been looking at some of their data and often those little blips happen just before there's a surge. Because um, all, you, you know that the virus can be present for a couple of days um, before you develop symptoms and with asymptomatic people. So wastewater surveillance can pick that up. So it's not a one-to-one -one relationship about um, the rate of, of cases, but it gives you a sense uh, about what's happening. So John Cunningham and our epi that you all know is very excited about that, and I am too. It's one more way that we're tracking um, COVID in our communities. Um, last little bit, um, we have uh, low-cost rabies clinics that we do every fall. We had one on September 22nd and another one on the 29th. And thank you to the vets who come out and support those um, because some people couldn't afford to go to the vet and get the full sort of assessment that was done, but they can come and get um, the rabies vaccine. Um, where our inspection staff are now out doing more of the regular inspection works at high risk premises and so on um, that we had to put aside a little bit, but we're getting back into that um, critical work. And this is Environmental Public Health Week, uh, which really celebrates the core work that public health inspectors do to keep our communities happy. And the last thing I wanted to bring up is we, um, on the Finance Committee, we were talking about the PSL audit and Bill Dobson said to me, how has, has uh, the COVID um, um, pandemic affected the PSL programs and what are the wait times? So Bill, I got information for you and for everyone else. So um, wait times for the program did go up in March, April and May as we were just getting used to it and what we needed to do. Um, and then we, um, we um, refocused um, the, the program went into um, more virtual kind of um, setup, just bringing in key people and things were down. But gradually the wait times have started to go up, um, partly because of increased referrals. Um, and the telepractice that we're doing um, is, is taking more time than the others. So the good thing is, is with having a consistent approach, um, that we, we're not seeing some place that has bigger wait times than others. Um, but the program overall is looking at how we can improve service um, um, by starting to do more in person and starting to use the, um, the virtual a little bit differently. So, um, so know that, that we are paying attention to that bill and um, we'll keep on looking at it because that's a really critical service. And that's my report. All right, thank you very much. A very detailed one. Uh, uh, does anyone have any questions um, for Dr. Stewart? Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, just a couple of questions. Thanks, Doug, and thank you, uh, Paula, for this report. Um, we talked in our meeting the other night, a municipal meeting, about uh, when, if we delegate uh, the uh, organizers of, a, of an event to look after the uh, passport. And it was pointed out that it might be a little bit of a problem, say, in a case like where there's a wedding and you might like the people have to maybe contact everyone who's expected to come to make sure mm -hmm. that they bring their passport. But uh, with wedding, especially with wedding receptions, you always get people coming that maybe weren't expecting to come. So. Mm -hmm we th that was pointed out that it could be a problem and then i have mm -hmm. one other question and this is i i'm just using this as an example uh but it probably happens other places too but my granddaughter who is one and a half years old who lives my daughter and her husband and their child lives with us and uh, she goes to the uh, daycare in smith falls and probably once a week, almost every kid gets a runny nose. And as soon as they get a runny nose, they can't go back to school the next day. And in, in our case, so they, they, they can't really get a test, a rapid test apparently in Smith Falls. So they have to drive to Brockville to get this rapid test because otherwise they can't go back to school. And I just kind of wondered, like, do you know anything about that? Like, is, is, there, is there a place in Smith Falls where people can get, and I'm just using my granddaughter as an example, but I'm sure that 
there's other people in the same situation, but are there places that can get a rapid test uh, like mm -hmm. in Smith Falls? So those two questions. Okay, so the first one, I think, yes, if, you're, if you own a facility and you're gonna delegate, then you have to make sure that the people, you, the organization you're delegating to can do it fully. Um, and if you think they can't, then you're going to have to do it. So you're absolutely right. It, it isn't like the delegation is that you are sure because you are the person who owns the facility is fundamentally responsible for <coughs> implementing the regulation. So, so yes, you need to make sure that they can do it. In terms of the family, so if a child only has a runny nose, they do not have to be tested. They, that, those, because that wasn't one of the symptoms that I listed. And the province pulled back on that specifically because a runny nose can be cold, it can be allergies, it can be just a little bit of irritation, um, so that a runny nose by itself does not need to be um, tested. Now, if the child is, is just under the weather with a runny nose and starting a cold, well, then don't send them to school because then you're going to spread the rhinovirus. Like, so it's, it's being sensible about um, a runny nose, but that doesn't need to be tested um, all by itself. In terms of the rapid tests, um, both Almont and Kempfel, and I think Brockville probably have the ID now test, and that is a, that is a rapid test, and it's a PCR test. So it uses the same technology as the swab that is sent into the lab, but it's done through through a little machine um, that's calibrated and everything. So, and I know that Almont in particular is using it um, a lot for, um, um, for uh, children in particular, just for that reason. Um, I think that, um, and so I'm, I'm not 100% sure about um, Kempville and, and uh, Brockville because Kempville um, Assessment Center goes to Erla and they be getting pretty quick turnaround for their, their tests, so I haven't needed it. So um, I think you can, people could call to the Assessment Center and find out what tests are available and the numbers are up on our website. Just one quick follow up, Mr. Chair, please. Yes, like, they, they are being told that they have to be tested, even with a runny nose. So I think, Bill, can you email me the name of the daycare and we'll follow up on that? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank it's you, just Bill. it's just a change at the beginning of September. Okay. I see uh, Peter. Uh, you have a comment or question, Peter? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's, a, I guess, a comment, like observation. Um, I've been really proud of the health unit and all of the partners in the... Uh, only were you out front early and in leading the pack, you're still there. And I was trying to account for why Lanark Creeds Grumble went to the top and hung on to it. And it's all the things that you mentioned, Dr. Stewart, the partners, your staff, it, it's, it's a whole bunch of things. It's probably, a, the municipalities got on board. Um, but then I, I kept saying, well, a lot of the other uh, health units had the same, and I kept trying to wonder why we got up so high and stayed up there. And, so I've come down to having an opinion on it. And I think it has to do with your weekly radio calls, Dr. Stewart. Mm -hmm. I bet you you're hitting 90% of the, of the population. And what I, and I've listened to so many of them. I think what you've been in particular is a clear, friendly voice, a trusted voice throughout the pandemic. And when things changed, you explained why they changed. And people really, really trusted you. And I think mm. this is Peter McKenna's opinion, uh, put us over the top and kept this right at the top. So it's a whole bunch of things, but I think the reason we're over 90 is because of you and your weekly, it's like listening. I don't mean this. It's like listening to your grandmother every week She's smart, she's friendly, she explains things. And I just want to go out and get vaccinated after I hear you. So that I just wanted to get that in there. Well, oh, thank thank you, Peter. It's um I I I love those. I, I do the one in Brockville and the one Lake 88. And I 
Um, I have a, there's a part where people ask me questions and they're all, they're always really good questions. They're complicated. And, and I just love that connection with people. So thank you. And Peter Please it's, be part of it. And Peter, it's a Peter opinion, but I think uh, there's a lot of uh, board members that share that. I saw a few thumbs going up uh, from the reaction mm -hmm. uh, emojis. Uh, and it certainly reflects my view also. So thank you for that. Does anybody thank else you. have any uh, questions for Dr. Stewart on the update? Uh, the only thing I would mention uh, is that I keep hearing that um, you can delegate the authority for checking um, that the vaccine records are there and the driver's license. But I always remember or remind organizations that you can delegate, but it doesn't remove your requirement to yeah. confirm that it's actually being done. So yeah. you're absolutely right. You have to be confident that they can do it. But however you choose, there has to be a way that you're verifying that it's actually being done. Yeah, yeah, very good point, Doug. Very good point. All right, uh, with that then, uh, we're going to move on to item seven, which is in the camera part. And uh, for that, I have a motion to go in the camera, uh, which I'll now read and get uh, approved. Um, so it is moved by Cheryl Smith, seconded by Doug Struthers, that this board move into a closed session of the Board of Health due to the following, which is labor relations or employee negotiations. Is there any comments or discussion before I call the question? Seeing none, does anybody object to my declaring this motion carried? So this motion is carried. We are in closed session, so I'll wait until um, our, our uh, systems people have cleared um, everyone else. <clears throat> 